good morning folks I am um, up here at the pasture it's very pretty right there and the sun's not shining to the camera but uh so the last three projects that I did were all um, wood pieces that Julia found one, Lincoln found one, and I found one. And I made each individual one into, you know, made a project out of it. So yesterday we were out and Gigi found a couple pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go and retrieve one right now. Maybe walk over and get the other one too, we'll see. Morning goats. Morning goats. Hey, you gonna be on camera? <laughs> Buggers. It's actually gonna be super nice today. It's, it was a little chilly this morning, but um, by midday it's gonna be 60 degrees. Um, that's kind of cool. So the one piece was way back here somewhere. Just so you get an idea where I'm at. There's the second barn in Julia's uh, garden area. And there's the first barn uh, back there. This is a pasture, a wooded, a wooded grazing area. We'll say that for when the horses were here. But we want to fence it in the rest of the way so uh, the goats could be in here. They would love it, you know. This is like a little bit of everything in here. So, love coming up here in the morning. Like I said, these are the times of the day I'm doing better. We've got some giant, giant trees here. This is a big, big old oak. Um, now there's quite a few of them back here. Fortunately, quite a few that have fallen down as well. Do -do 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 -do. So here we are. I'm gonna spin this around for you guys, okay? Okay, so this tree I haven't got to yet, but it's fallen right on our fence line. It looks pretty cool actually, but um, this is the bark that we got. And I say bark, but it's really not. It's um, it's actually segments of the tree that were so rotted. Um, I wonder if I could back it out. Okay, so this is what they are. They're not really, it's not really bark. Um, the tree was so rotted, it was splitting and you could just peel off sections where a ring was. So if you can envision all those individual rings well, this splitted up, splitted? It split <laughs> right apart on that, uh, on that point. So I think I'll take these two big ones down. I didn't realize they were this big. I forgot this. Oh, no, what? I'll just take this one. All right, folks, I'm gonna set this down and I'll talk with you in a minute. Okay, so let me spin around. We got those. I'm gonna leave them on Morgan's bench. Uh, let's take a walk. I got to go way over there beyond the fence line. It's just so beautiful up here this time of day. Got some early morning fog burning off. You know, to give you guys a sense of like how I feel when I stand here. Um, since I could remember, you know, four, five, six years old, I wanted to live on a property 
oh, with pastures and animals and woods and just something just like this, you know, pond. Um, so when I walk through these areas and I come up here, I find myself often just thanking the Lord as I walk through, you know, I mean, my dream kind of came true and You know, there's times I never thought I would even have a decent car, let alone, you know, 15 acres and a nice house and everything. He sure fooled me. Our God did. I think he just wanted to make sure that I had faith. Sometimes I didn't, though. Sometimes I was very mad at God. I might have even cursed him, I don't know. But uh, when I look back on it, it's all for a reason, you know? It was all to build me up, really. Make me a better person and and bring me closer to him, you know? It's my will that chooses to walk in the direction of God. But he showed me so many examples of what he's capable of, um, including, you know, what you're all looking at right now. Uh, God's capable of mighty, mighty things. I hope you folks all have a beautiful day. Let's continue to walk over to get my other piece of wood. Well, there. This is the far pasture, incidentally. I haven't really shown this one on TV much, on YouTube, on TV. Um, so that woods is ours as well. And it goes right up to the neighbor's property over there. And then that tree line is shared with the neighbor over there. And then that tree line's ours all the way where you can't see no more and inside that tree line is probably another depending on where you're at like 100 to 400 feet deep just this end that's straight in front of the camera is the deepest it goes um, almost 400 feet it's a 378 and then this corner is the shortest distance it's only like probably a hundred feet to the property line but and that's the pasture that you usually see us in over there and there's Julia's garden way back there you can just see it so these are the two pieces um this one here we thought looked like a dragon I don't know if maybe from this side like a dragon's head. So I'm gonna to try to clean it up and do that. Um, so, dragon head, right? And then, I'm not really sure which one. Yeah, 
Oh, that's gonna look so cool. I'm not, sorry, I'm doing this off camera, but yeah, I'm gonna close this down and get up to the shop. So here's those two pieces up at the shop. Um, I'm looking at this and it's got a little bit of spalting in it. Um, right there, some over in here. So it feels like it could be very fragile. I've broken off most of the pieces that would break off, but um, it still feels pretty fragile. So I don't know if I'll do much to them, but let me go get the dragon head so to speak, the piece that I think looks like a dragon head, and I'll set it up on the wood and show you what I think it will look like. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I know it looks pretty rough right now because the way I got everything balanced and it's not quite um, oriented how I want it to be. But for the sake of showing you, um, this is what I think I'm gonna do with it. The back piece, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm gonna clean it up. I may add some texture, flames, I don't know, something like that. But the piece in front, the dragon, I'll go through. Um, when I look at it, like this area looks like an eye to me. So I think I'll just try to go through and bring those out, those features out a little bit. You know, maybe this is like a set of horns on the front or just the ridge of its brow. I don't know. You know, a big horn coming off the back or something. And then the back end is just going to trail off. So what I think I'll do is I'll just cut it to match the end here. And probably the same thing. I thought about adding texture down the body and then just kind of let it peter off as if you don't see any more of it. But... That's kind of what I'm shooting for. We'll see if I'm anywhere close, but um, for Gigi's sake, I hope I can nail it because she loves dragons and this was, she's the last one. Um, like I said, I did projects for everybody else or with, with wood found by everybody else. This is um, Gigi's, the wood that she found and it's opportunity for me to do something with it. Um, the other piece, it's right here, this piece, it's a smaller section. I, I, if I could get the rest of the piece to look like this, I would love to scribe something into it or maybe just scribe it into it and it let it be only on one side, I don't know. But this wood in here is so nice I, I could do a very little sanding and, and make it look really sharp. So we'll just see. I'm running out of places to keep pieces of wood. So I'm gonna build a, sh a sh uh, what are they called? <laughs> like a little shed over my workspace outside. Um, really just a roof. And then I'll have some spots set up where the wood can be safe and out of the rain and, and get air and dry and everything. So, because I don't want to force myself into making something simply because I got the wood. What I would rather do is just find unique pieces of wood and then let them cure, so to speak, in my shop or in and around my shop. And then as inspiration comes, I could pull them out and make things from them. Um, so often when I go to make something, sorry about that. Let me, let me flip. Okay, so um, I was talking about finding the wood and how it, it sits around. And what I used to do is I would, Say I'd walk past a piece of wood up in the pasture somewhere and it caught my attention. Usually that's all it would do. It would catch my attention, like, oh, that's kind of neat. You know, and I'd be walking away and, you know, I'd get about 50 feet away and I'd already have ideas. And 
it would be like that oftentimes for months. I'd be, oh, you know, the, I should grab that piece. And I never do. I'm, I'm real pro, uh, um, what's the word? I uh, procrastinate. So it would often sit and maybe I'd pick it up and I'd move it to somewhere semi-safe. So I'd pick it up in the pasture and I'd move it over to one of the benches just to get it up off the ground. And, you know, maybe someday I'll carry it down to the shed or something. <laughs> and it could sit there like a year like that. And then I'll go grab it and, you know, bring it down by my shed and um, from that, you know, my workspace. And then from then it's usually within a year, something will happen to it. But um, I just, I want to be able to get more in the habit of um, when I see those pieces laying on the ground, I want to get into the habit of picking them up. Um, not just suspecting that it would be a cool piece, but saying, yes, yeah, Steve, you know this is going to be a cool something. You can do something with it. Grab it now and, and worry about the thought process later. And I got to get in the habit of doing that. Uh, you know, let's see, which piece? Oh, the, the piece that's the dragon. When I was working on the fence line, um, that was a like a juniper root or something. I can't recall what it was or, but it was a branch or something that I ripped out and I threw it in a pile. And then when it, I was out there mowing, I hit it with the bush hog. And that's, I think how it got frayed up looking on the ends and stuff, but it broke, uh, it broke the pin on the, it's a sheer pin on the bush hog. <laughs> so I was well aware of that piece. You know, this was last uh, last fall, like October or something. I was well aware of that piece was laying up there. And then we were just up there walking and Gigi saw it and Julia saw it. Julia, I think, might have said first that it looks like a dragon. But that's kind of how it goes. It's kind of funny. Um, the situation I think I'm running into now is I'm running out of stuff on the property. We, I could go and cut some stuff down and cut some stuff up, but I'm not quite that point yet. Um, you know, we just had this past winter, we had two more trees fall up in the pasture. So I'll go up and get those and see what I can salvage out of that. Um, and then I got some more trees that I have to cut down, like near the house and whatnot. And I'll scavenge wood out of those as long as I can. Um, but it'd be fun to take a walk to water area where there's lots of driftwood, whether it be the, you know, a lake or something like that. To see if I could find some driftwood pieces and maybe put something together. But, but that's all I got for this video. I just wanted to show you some of those pieces because we went... The kids and I and Julia, we went for a walk the other night and we um, we did just what I said. We, I left the one piece right where it was and the other two pieces we went and we just set up on a log. So, um, you know, and, and in trueness to what I was just telling you, my story, typically those would have sat like that for a long time before I even considered to bring them down. But um, like I said, I wanted to make this one for Gigi so as soon as the wood is ready and dried out and I can start messing with it, I'm going to get to work. But, well, thanks for joining me on uh, my little scavenger hunt. And, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and a thumbs up there. I appreciate it. Um, have a great day, folks.